everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming along today. The sun's shining. Is this the first day of summer or something? I haven't seen much sun so far and that's part of the story. I'll say welcome to the uh, LPP site here, research site. And I'll also ask, can I just have a show of hands? Who has physically been here before in this paddock? Well over 50%. Excellent. That saves me giving a lot of background. But for the people who haven't been here before, or haven't seen this site before, please come up to me later and ask for any specific details that you think I might have missed or any uh, background that you might want me to fill you in on because there is, a, there is a lot that goes on behind this experiment that led up to this experiment taking place. So given that uh, the majority have been here before, the way I wanted to approach this morning was giving you an update really on the last 12 months and put that into context of the experiment overall, which has now been running three years and we're heading into our fourth year. So it's a tale, it's a tale of three years really um, that has led us to this point in this experiment. So what is the experiment about? Just briefly, the experiment is about trying to identify what might be an optimum proportion or an optimum ratio of lucerne in a tropical grass pasture. So why would we want to do that? First and foremost, who knows what the urea price is at the moment? <laughs> That's reason number one. I got a shock, I haven't checked on the urea price. Um, up until this week and I looked at the price and I went wow this is reminding me of uh, some years ago where we were approaching a thousand dollars a ton so all of a sudden your uh, nitrogen has become expensive the last few years it hasn't been so so a legume in our tropical grass pasture gives us that opportunity to to fix atmospheric nitrogen and have that cycle through to the tropical grass to help its production so that's reason number one reason number two forage quality. We know that tropical grass pastures, they can have an upper limit to their absolute quality for livestock intake. However, growing a mixture with a nice legume like lucerne, well, we're going to change that plane of nutrition for our livestock. So that's reason number two, increase the forage quality. Livestock have the chance to take legume as well as the grass. And what I'm most passionate about is water. We've had a fair bit of it in the last little while. But whatever our production system is, we always have to go back to what we're trying to do. And that is to produce our, our crops, whether it's a grass crop or a grain crop, at the most water productive rate that we can do. So how many kilograms of dry matter or how many kilograms of grain or how many kilograms of product for each millimetre of rainfall that we receive. And that's where the marrying of the tropical grass with something like lucerne or another legume helps us to increase that water productivity. So that's the introduction. So what have we seen? Experiment was planted in the ground in November 2018. Now the experiment is established at eight plants per square metre. So all treatments are eight plants per square metre. Just the ratio of tropical grass to lucerne changes with each treatment. Now first treatment is all digit grass, which receives urea fertiliser, providing about 100 kilograms of N per hectare per year. Through to treatment five, which is all lucerne. So eight plants of lucerne per metre. The three treatments in the middle are the varying ratios. So L25 is 25% lucerne, L50 is 50% lucerne, and L75 is 75% lucerne. You can see some little placards behind me, which are highlighting each, uh, a plot in each of those treatments. The first 12 months after we planted the experiment was dry. Who remembers the drought? You know, all of a sudden it's like, what drought? We're battling with floods all of a sudden. That's uh, agriculture in the northwest. So the first 12 months 
uh, from planting, I think it was around 300, 320 odd millimetres of rain for the 12 months. That rolled into the second year where we had in excess of 800, 900 millimetres of rain in the 12 months. And the last 12 months, including last week, we've tipped over a thousand millimetres for the calendar 12 months. So we've really had three contrasting years which I believe have had an influence on what we've seen in terms of the production. The first 12 months, the story was all about stored soil water. We planted into a full profile. It was hot. Digit grass said, thank you very much. I like it hot. I like it when there's uh, water in the soil and it performed beautifully. High production. Lucen didn't like it in that establishment year, which is typical for Lucen. But in the second year, things changed. Who remembers December 2019? The dry finished, the rain started. So for that second 12 months, we had a situation where we began with drier soil profiles, but with a lot of rain. So it was sort of like a, a year of rebuilding soil water while also producing our pasture. And for those first two years, if, you do a, if we did some totals on the herbage production, digit grass dominated the swords. And we thought, oh, okay, this is interesting. When we look at the mixtures, the L25 and the L50, they were performing the same as the L0, the all digit grass fertilized. We thought, gee, this is all right. So our mixture, of L25 or L50, it's keeping up with fertilised digit grass. And for those who came to the technical update in autumn, was it March this year, up at the training centre, you can remember I asked a very serious question. Do we just add nitrogen or do we try to grow a mixture? Because which one's easier? And the message I was giving out then was, well, if you know you have stored soil water and you know rainfall's coming, then it's far easier to apply nitrogen and generate the growth and utilize it. Very controlled, very easy. Balancing the legume in a grass sward, that brings added complexity. And that brings us to the last 12 months. So this, the middle 12 months, we saw the L0, all digit grass, go from the driest of all treatments in stored soil water to the wettest of all treatments in stored soil water. The lucin went from the wettest of all treatments, I did say that correctly, lucin was the wettest of all treatments um, at the end of the dry period, and is now, or prior to the last two weeks, it was among the driest of the treatments. That may not sit intuitively with what people think, uh, because we always hear, loosen, it takes all the water, it'll draw the profile dry, all those things. There are some caveats with that, and I'm, I'm happy to have a discussion later. But what was interesting, in this last 12 months, we've seen the digit-dominated treatments refill the profile all the way down to, to 1.9 metres depth. Treatments dominated by lucin have only re-wet down to about one metre. The bottom half of that profile is as dry now as it was in November 2019, before the rain started. Why? Loosen activity. Was loosen activity enough to utilize 1,147 millimeters of rain over the last 12 months? Using water balance, I can say it didn't. Using water balance, documented in the table there on one of the pages without um, 
giving you a wrong number off the top of my head. I think the total water used for Lucen was around 890 millimetres. So 8.9 megs. Yet we received 1147 millimetres of rain over this last period. So where did the water go? Probably ran off. So there's something going on there between the pure Lucen at eight plants per square metre and the pure Digit at eight plants per square metre where we're influencing the way that the sward captures rainfall, infiltrates that rainfall and stores that rainfall. It's hard to imagine, but a little over five weeks ago, the, L0, uh, the L100 and the L75s, they were wilting. Loosened plants in those plots were wilting. And it hadn't really got hot. And we had a lot of rain. So yeah, there's, there's definitely an interaction going on there and that's part of the interesting story of trying to figure this out. Um, so now what that presents me with is, okay, heading into this summer, finally the sun's come out, but now that the sun has come out, it leads me to the story of this last 12 months and why the lucerne has actually dominated the treatments. I said it was a tale of three years. The first 12 months, it was dry. It was also hot. Digit likes that. The second 12 months transitioned from hot and dry to sort of hot and wet. Digit still like that. But this last 12 months, beginning from February this year, maximum temperatures have been down below average. So digit grass pretty much packed its bags and said, I'm done <laughs> January, February this year. So we didn't get our shoulder growth out of the digit grass that we normally get. And I'm suspecting that was because maximum temperatures were quite below average. But we shift into the autumn time and the early winter, and it's the opposite story. So all of a sudden, instead of being cold, cold, it was okay. It was right in the wheelhouse for loosen. So the loosen growth carried on. Winter the same, midwinter. It wasn't a cold winter. So loosen kept trickling on, kept generating a bit of growth. And spring, up until today, has also been well below average for maximum temperature. October here, daily maximum was 25 degrees for October. November, up until the last bit of data I have, again, Daily maxima for the month, 25 degrees. Absolutely in the wheelhouse for Lucen. That's, that's its sweet spot. Remember, it's a temperate legume. It's not a tropical legume. So for the spring, we've now seen the Lucen get the jump again because it was a cool spring. Some periods of rain, now very wet, but not under all Lucen. And it's tended to dominate the herbage production. It's interesting when you tabulate the production year on year of the total production from Lucen over three years, 50% of that occurred in the last 12 months. So the first two years, not so good. This last 12 months, it's contributed 50% of its total production over the three years. And I know I've said this before at field days when talking about the contrast between Lucen and Digit. We normally expect the Lucen to begin its growth cycle, really growing, a good six weeks before the Digit grass. Digit grass, mm, somewhere around that mid-September and later, we start to see good green leaf coming in on it, but the Lucen's already growing. And that sets up the competition for the remainder of the season. So Lucen, if it's in the sward, in the mix, then it's dominating the water use from that early part of the spring, which tends to carry on through the rest of the summer. 
that's more or less where we're at right now. Treatments dominated by digit grass have a full profile of water, ready to go. It's getting warmer. The digit is about to hit its straps. Treatments dominated by lucin, they've had a run. Despite the rainfall that we've had, the profile's only half full, nothing below a metre. So once, once the demand really comes on it, I think Lucent will say thanks very much, I've, I've done my thing for the time being, I'll uh, close down. So at the end of the day, if I tabulate all of our production over the last three years, there are several things that stand out. One, the all digit grass production is greater than the all lucent production. So 100% digit has far out yielded 100% lucent. But and this is the, the positive, all of the mixtures, so the L25, the L50 and the L75, have all out yielded both all digit or all lucent. So that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming through time for the mixtures to do their thing, the lucent to capture atmospheric nitrogen, cycle it, make it get it available to the grass to help the production of the grass. If you take a quick walk at some time around the plots right now, you'll see that the digit plants in the L25 treatment are looking a bit sick. They're looking a bit yellow. So right at this point in time in the L25s, it looks like there's not sufficient nitrogen available for them at this point in time. But the digit plants in the L50 and the L75, they're looking okay. But when you look at the digit plants in the L0, which, is, which, which was fertilized a couple of weeks ago, you will see a stark contrast. So how much nitrogen is the lucin fixing and how much of it is getting to the grass? A very valid question. This experiment is a perfect setup, I guess, to, to help quantify that. So last summer, from the beginning of the growing season to the end, we took pre-season soil cores, the full length of the profile, to test for nitrate and total N. Same at the end of the growing season. But at each dry matter harvest, which was roughly every six weeks, occasional three-week cuts if growth was strong, at each of those cuts, we sampled the, the grass and the legume. And those samples have been collected to be analyzed for the 15N. So the natural abundance of 15N, which with the help of colleagues down the back there, Clarence Mercer and Graham, we will attempt to do a nitrogen balance for that season to quantify how much N was fixed by the lucin and how much of that N made its way into the digit grass in those treatments. Don't have those data just now. Uh, those samples are sitting in California at University of California Davis for testing. So that's the next carrot for the next field day that we have. We should have an answer in that regard. So I will call that quits apart from any questions anyone would like to field. Did you have uh, any difference in plant, plant fatalities in between the plots? Any difference in plant fatalities among the treatment plots? Not specifically at this point, Stuart. Um, however, when I walk down here this morning and anyone who's got keen eyes, they will see some very sick lucent plants. <laughs> Now we're counting, we're keeping track of the loosened plants, individual, all plants individually. So we're tracking them through time. So when we know one falls out, we know. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did frequencies and densities on the experiment. And 
as is typical with Lucen, three years into a stand life, we're starting to lose the odd individual. Looking over my shoulder just now, I can see that's accelerated um, with this recent spell of rain. Uh, the, word, the, the fungal dis the disease, which I can never pronounce, is something like Colitoctrium. Yeah, that one, Lester, thank you. And given the fact that we've had some quite wet surface conditions in the Lucen, perhaps that's allowed the pathogen to get in. So we're tracking that through time, Stuart. Digit grass, they're all still there. Lucen, there's a few disappearing. Are these cut and grazed and removed, or how do you manage the sward over the three years? Yeah. In terms of managing, managing the, the experiment, it's a cut and carry management. So each six weeks or every three weeks, if growth is strong, we'll assess, cut, and carry the material off. So there is an export of nutrient from the plots with that cut and carry process. We did not graze at all last summer because we were running the N15, 15N sampling. So we didn't want sheep coming in here and messing things up on us. Uh, we're hoping to get the sheep onto this experiment this summer. The only fertilising is the digit, the straight digit plot, is that correct? The only treatment that receives nitrogen fertiliser is the straight digit. So it's around 100 units of N per hectare uh, equivalent. And that's, that's the sort of a minimum for a, for a good production boost. Going any lower than that, and it's a bit like maintenance, around 100, we can expect a good response. What variety of lucerne is uh, in the dormancy? It's a, it's a semi-dormant, semi so it's a lucerne. I think its winter activity rating is five off the top of my head from memory. Um, so it's sort of a semi-dormant. So you still get some growth out of the shoulder season going into winter, and that's definitely been the case this year. Sean, when this goes commercial and people are putting uh, Lucent in with their digit, there's a, quite a little bit of a buffer between having, say, 75% um, Lucent down to 25% Lucent because we'll expect that Lucent will go out under grazing unless it's done properly. Correct, correct. There is, there is, if we were thinking about establishing this as a commercial stand, then at establishment, if we're aiming for around that eight to 10 plants per square meter in total, and 50% of those are loosened, then that's enough. I think if we establish a stand at 75% loosened, then gee whiz, are we a bit high there? Maybe just sow a straight dry land loosened stand because it will really outcompete the digit at that, dent, at that proportion in the early stand life. However, at 50, 50-50, I think through years hmm, yeah, three to five, we'll start to see the loose and fall out, digit readily seeds and regenerates. So three, year three to year five, yeah, you start to see the loose and falling out. By year seven, you'll probably have a 25-75, loose and 25, digit 75, um, and a few Stragglers of loose and all hang on forever, probably. John, what was the nitrogen and the organic carbon levels when you started this project? Yeah, they're all in the suite being analysed. So I don't have those values for you now. Um, so all those data were collected at time of planting when he took our initial soil cores. And we've done those repeat soil cores start of last season and end of last season. So that'll give us a bit of a, a midpoint through, this, through the experiment. And then we'll see what happens a bit later on. So we're having to actually question loosen as a viable um, plant to use in especially low rain districts because of the plants aren't symbiotic, it's taking up the moisture so the digit's going to. So in time, will you actually do pits through here to see the difference in the soil structures according to the work you've been doing? We could do soil pits with a backhoe to have a look-see, or 
through our, if we did some soil sampling at the end of the experiment to see how the, the treatments have progressed through time, we could do that. Now I went and looked back through some of my prior experiments done within this vicinity because I was thinking, what, why? why? Why have the loosened dominated treatments not re-wet this last year? Why is that? Um, just to our north, we had experiments there for around eight years. And I went back to 2016 and I looked at the data in 2016. You remember what 2016 was like? The loosened treatment accumulated something like 280 odd millimetres of profile water. So it wasn't limited in that year. Now, is this an artifact of coming out of that horrendous dry time? I don't know. It's, it's just a really interesting observation. And if, there's a, if there is a soil structural issue there, that the, this is a vertisol soil. So I've, I've no evidence from the soil water content that Lucin dried the profile at depth more so than Digit. Digit out dried it, but Digit re-wet. Just another question. The way you're um, calculating the nitrogen uptake by the loosened plant, is that just through the leaf or is that through the leaf and the soil around it? Uh, we're qu we've quantified samples from the leaf and we've only done soil start and end. So we, haven't been qu we weren't trying to quantify changes in 15N concentration during the year. Soil was a start and end. So from the material grown during the season and the relative differences in the 15N, we should be able to determine over the last several years, it's not just this season, how much of that fixed end made its way to the digit grass. The cut and carry management that we use here, we, we know and we understand it's different to grazing. So when we graze our plots, there is residual organic matter left on the ground, trampled leaf, etc., etc., bit of hoof action, whatever. Um, so yes, there is a return of material to the soil surface. In our cut and carry management, mm, we're pretty clean. So yes. Who, who here knows a lot about growing lucerne? One, two, three, four, would you be happy in a dry land paddock if you had a loosened stand that was eight plants per square meter? No, no, and, it, and that's curious. I've, I've been waiting for this, you know, to be thrown a hand grenade by the crowd and say, well, your, your loosened density is too low. What do you expect? <laughs> so this is an experiment. This is an experiment with a purpose. That's why we've kept our density at eight because we know from our prior work that a tropical grass pasture at around that, somewhere between four and 10, it's a very good density to optimize water productivity. So we've targeted this density specifically uh, based on that research. The caveat being that perhaps for a pure dry land stand, eight plants per square meter at start, it's a bit low. So that may be exacerbating what Chris was talking about that we just don't have the density of loosened plants in these treatments to provide the sufficient crown cover and ground cover in order to maximize infiltration. So there could be a bit of that going on as well. Um, the digit grass we know has a, a strong fibrous, extensive root system, lots of infiltration pathways. So lots of infiltration pathways for rainfall to get back down into the subsoil here on this vertisol. Whereas eight plants per square meter of lucin with eight little tap roots as big as my little finger, not a lot of surface area there. So that could be the reason why we haven't got our infiltration back below a meter in this context. I'm assuming that uh, the selection of a winter activity lucin to put in the blend of five is a conscious thing because it uses less moisture over the over the uh, winter, spring, autumn period. Is that right? The, the, the selection of Venus in this experiment was a conscious decision. You're right, Stuart. The main reason for that decision was it is a variety we've used consistently through most of our work. So it's something we know a lot about. It's a, it's a benchmark for us, if you like. 
In past, we have done experiments with contrasting winter activity rating in mixtures with digit. And it's, it's really a story of the, the lower the winter activity rating, uh, the longer the stand life. The higher the winter activity rating, the shorter the stand life. Uh, really, what are you expecting as a proportion of nitrogen replacement from the, uh, from the loosen within the total needs of the, of the Premier Digit? I honestly can't answer that question, and that's why we did the sampling last summer. But visually, in the first two years, it appeared as though the mixtures were meeting the needs of the Digit grass. But you've got to remember, as your earlier point alluded to, establishing on a full profile with organic matter, with nitrate N, etc., etc. That was all there in the, in the discussion in those first two years. Now we've gone through three years, that background nutrition is not there anymore. <coughs> so now it does come down to what can the loosen provide at that density. And that's why we collected those numbers. So it'll be very intriguing to, to sort out that balance. And that's the advantage of the cut and carry that you've actually done is you've accelerated mm -hmm. the whole nitrogen cycle so you can see it in, like, realistically, this We've is an eight-year experiment. You, you've put so much pressure on it, you're mm -hmm. looking at the... Yeah, sorry. That's, yeah, I thought it was a clever design. I, I yeah. wasn't criticising your no, no. cut and carry. but yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so in this context, at eight plants per square metre, we know the pressure is on for water use. We know there's going to be competition there. At eight plants per square metre with cut and carry, we're harvesting nutrient. We're mining it. Now, can the loosen keep it up? Can the loosen keep up the supply in this context? So, 